Thank you for tuning in to the Shikama Live Show. This is February and that means it's Black History Month. Now a lot of people don't understand what what's the need for Black History Month. Well, a lot of black people do not receive uh, education that reflects their worth. Uh, in other words, black people are taught that they are worth less. Worth less than everybody. So, the powers that be in their ancient wisdom, uh, black leaders, uh, black activists actually, not the leaders. We're not talking about the Jesse Jackson types. They didn't come up with this. Actual black activists who are for black people and want to see black people get ahead and in this world, in this life, in their lifetime, thought it best to introduce a black history we do not go over anything in history. We called world history European history. European and history and world history are taught simultaneously as being one and the same. If it is not European history, if it does not involve a European, it is not worth mentioning. So, black people who had suffered through laws that stated you could not teach black people anything, including how to read, laws on the books uh, thought it best once we got our freedom that to jump ahead we should institute a Black History Month. I'm not going along with uh, this person invented this. I think that, uh, I think while that's worthwhile, I think that is not the crux of what Black History is. I give Black History throughout all of my videos. If you recall, I'll say something like, this happened in Africa in such and so uh, BC or what have you. And that's that's it. You have the information. I don't have to preface it with it being black history. We know everybody involved was black and not, not European. Unlike some of these documentaries that I see that say Europeans did it all. Well, here's an article that I came across and uh, something I did a little bit of research on. Uh, on NPR, uh, there was this little gem. Quote, there were no black artists with number one singles in 2013. Now, I want you to think back at all of the hype around black artists that you hear. And I want you, a lot of people are going to be shocked at that. No black artists with number one singles in 2013. Um, well, fools argue over who is the king of New York City last year, black artists were nowhere near to be seen at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 charts for the first time since the company began charting top 40 singles in 1958. How is this possible, you may ask? Jay-Z, Kanye West, Beyonce, Pusha T, and Drake? All dropped albums in 2013, but none of them were able to get a top single. Furthermore, of the 52 weeks in a year, white artists were on the top of the R&B, hip-hop for 44 of them, and blue-eyed soul reigned supreme. You know what, I have, I don't listen to hip-hop or whatever rap or, it's not hip-hop, it's rap. I don't listen to rap music. And I think, I think you're a fool if you call rap hip-hop. They have nothing to do with, the, with each other. The original defining something for you, the original definition of hip hop had nothing to do with rap. You might have a piece of rap in hip hop, that, but that didn't make it hip hop. Hip hop was hip hop, rap was rap. And in my book, it still is. Having these white people define your genres for you, you'll see why. In, in, in this article, you'll see why <laughs> this is going on. Is this what post-racial America looks like? 
Uh, white people never loved us, remember? But they always loved our music, and now we don't even have that anymore. What's next? An all-white NBA draft? <laughs> but seriously, is this the future of hip-hop and R&B? Will it soon be as whitewashed as rock and roll or punk? As Kelly Goff, author and commentator for The Daily Beast and The Root explains, it almost reminds me of the 50s and 60s, when you had a lot of music that was being made by white artists and being popularized by them, but it was coming from black artists. It's much easier to sell a Maglamore and Ryan Lewis and Eminem, uh, Justin Timberlake to mainstream audiences than it is to sell a Jay-Z. It is still a preferred feeling in mainstream pop culture that if we can find an attractive white act to do it, why not? Is Justin Timberlake the new Elvis? Do kids these days even know about Chuck Berry and Brad Brains? Will our kids now know Africa, Bambada, and Run DMC? Is hip hop as we know it dead? And rap. Pop charts analyst and slate writer Chris Molafi uh, says the problem arose when Billboard started using digital sales to compile its charts. What happens is, whether it's radio, whether it's iTunes, there's now a lot of data feeding into the Hot 100. The charts of 10 years ago when Outkast was number one, iTunes was not a factor in the charts yet because it was brand new. There was no YouTube. It literally didn't exist. And so this great feedback loop we used to have where we had crossover from the R&B charts through the pop charts has kind of gotten swamped. As Malanfi points out, it's a huge pendulum swing in less than a decade. In 2004, literally every song that topped the 100 was by a person of color, a, a black person. This, this year, black artists had only featured roles, as in they were featured in songs by white artists. <laughs> Essentially, the playing field has been broadened enormously since Billboard started changing the way they chart singles. What this means is that since the incorporation of digital sales, R&B and rap acts can't compete in their own genres, meaning black people can't compete in their own genres. One could argue that not even Justin Timberlake's song is R&B. But Billboard no longer looks at it that way. Instead of compiling charts based off of what the R&B audience is listening to, they're including an artist's entire album into the mix. Only the future will tell if this trend will continue, but one thing is for certain. Artists, black artists, are going to have to work a lot harder if they want to keep their charts stats up. Uh, I, the whole person of color is ridiculous to me. I don't talk about people of color. That, that sounds retarded. E either they're black or Latino. Come on. And another blow to musicians of black musicians, not a single living black artist is being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year for only the second time in the history of the hall. Not that there wasn't an abundance of black artists to choose from, including Nile Rodgers, who has garnered eight nominations and rocked on one of the biggest tracks of the year, Daft Punk's Get Lucky. However, as Malanfi again points out, this year the hall will induct Daryl Hall and John Oates, an act with a long history of soul music appreciation that once even topped the R&B chart. So rock hall voters are honoring the sound of black music, just not actual black people, end quote. As the idea of post-racial America eliminating race from the equation altogether, the short answer is yes. Unfortunately, when people start touting the idea of living in a colorblind society, color begins to disappear in ways that are problematic. Goff brings up the point that often people pride themselves on being colorblind and often when people use that language, what ends up happening is the color disappears from the equation, from the conversation, from the room. As Goff expresses, we should not have to see each other's color. We should be able to see each other's color and not have a problem with it. So we've come full circle from the 50s and 60s when literally producers would go to black artists, get a complete track from a black artist, take it and put a white artist to doing the track and then sell it to the public. 
it's 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 the whole sort of slave industry in music so the slave does the work of coming up with the track writing the lyrics writing the music and then they take it put it on a, a white face and sell it to the white people instead of the black act crossing over from the captured audience of black people listening to it to crossing over to the white audience they they're just going back in back in time and making the white artist uh, be the salesman of the music it's the same exact music it's just a white face on top of it now is that fair is it uh, I mean whether it's fair or not uh, if we're talking about a post-racial society society there should be no need for that there should be no need for an Eminem there should be no need for a Timberlake there should be no need need for a Macklemore uh, you should be able to have uh, R&B singers and I guess rappers. I, I, I think rap should really die. Uh, rap should be what it was prior to the music industry getting a hold of it. Uh, a form of expression where an artist, namely a poet and a historian, said things to black audience. That's what rap was in, in initially intended for. And that's the, these were our bards dating all the way back to Africa if you want you want real black history. So in Africa you had bards and they would rap to the village, rap to the city, rap to the king. Uh, and we're using the, the, the word is just it seems so just disgusting and uh, unrefined. but it would be the black bards. Uh, predating all bards in Europe, of course, by hundreds of thousands of years, or shall we say tens of thousands of years. And we carry the tradition all the way from Africa all to the, uh, to the uh, middle of Central America and to North America. And now it's a genre of music where uh, black people are forced to say very disgusting things uh, to black audiences and degrading the black audience uh, they're being used uh, if you listen to rap it does nothing more than degrade black people that's all it ever does and that black people would sell their souls for that uh, when uh, in my next video I'm going to show you that the rich black people don't make their money from being a singer or being a athlete they make their money from endorsements and business so what's the point of degrading your black audience for 20 years and ending up rich from selling real estate i mean it makes no sense anyway thank you this has been a black history moment if you will uh, about this subject of going back to the 50s in the music industry uh, tell me what you think about that thank you for watching the chicago live show